Hello, my name is Ron Colicchio. I'm a Deputy Commissioner with the Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection's Public Vehicle Investigations Division. Today, this presentation is geared towards the general public, public vehicle operators, and those that regulate and enforce this industry. Let's start with a little basic information about our department. The Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection's primary purpose is to ensure a fair and vibrant marketplace for both businesses and consumers. We also issue business licenses and public vehicle licenses. We provide businesses education and access to resources, as well as we're responsible for enforcing the municipal code that protects the consumers from fraud. This is all done through our investigative staff. Now, our business affairs investigators are commissioned with full police powers. Their enforcement can include, but not be limited to, issuing something as basic as a notice of violation or correction that will tell you you have a certain amount of days to come into compliance, uh, to receiving an administrative notice of violation, which is requiring you to appear in court for a violation. We also have the ability to subpoena books and records, issue cease and desist orders, and in the case of public vehicles, impound a vehicle that's operating illegally. And in rare cases also, unfortunately, you know, we have the ability to make an arrest or direct an arrest. However, that's not the norm. Two of the primary functions of our Enforcement Investigations Division is responding to complaints and conducting investigations. The best way to file a complaint is 311. 311 is going to give you an opportunity to say exactly what your interest is, concern is. You can stay anonymous if you want or provide a name. I will say it's helpful if you provide a name and phone number because sometimes we need additional information. But there's a tracking mechanism in place and as a department we're required to respond to all of these within a required period of time. You can also file complaints via mail or in person. The address is posted here. And finally, via email, though we highly encourage you to use the 311 system. Now, as far as investigations, in addition to responding to complaints, we do take a proactive approach and make sure that we investigate and inspect the industry, making sure that they're following the requirements of the municipal code and any rules and regulations that the department has promulgated. I mean, this ensures your rights and public safety from any type of consumer fraud and it presents an equal playing field for all businesses that are operating in this industry. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the various public vehicle areas that we regulate. Now I've provided some code information along each category that we enforce and today we're not going to be going into specific detail information, but I want you to know that this information is going to be available online and at your disposal so that you can access any part of it that you may have an interest, whether you're a customer, an industry operator, or again, somebody that's regulating this industry. So the first, let's talk about City Chicago taxi medallion owners. Well, in the City of Chicago, in order to operate and own a taxi, you're issued a medallion. Medallions are fixed to the vehicle and later on in this presentation we'll show that they match with the license plate. This is what gives you an opportunity uh, to uh, operate a taxi cab. Now the City of Chicago also licenses the taxi chauffeurs and of course this allows you and gives you the responsibility of being either an owner, operator, or chauffeur of the vehicle. Now the City of Chicago will license what we call taxi affiliations. Now, taxi affiliations can represent one primary owner or several individuals who want to benefit from insurance discounted rates. So there's membership benefits for them joining uh, an affiliation. And they'll also help them with credit card processing services as well as dispatching services. So this is a benefit to you as a customer because it broadens your base of opportunity for getting service and it benefits the operator because even if they're a small operator they're going to get the benefits of being a large operator. 
We also have City of Chicago licensed managers. Now, sometimes people will get involved in a business or an industry because they want to make an investment, but they don't necessarily want to run the business. And in this case here, they'll hire a licensed manager. But the City of Chicago does require them to be licensed. And they are, of course, responsible for following all operational requirements by the municipal code or any rule or regulation that we may promulgate. Now, licensed brokers with the City of Chicago is an individual who basically is licensed to sell or transfer a medallion. It's, it's, it's equivalent to like when you own a house and you want to make a sale, you have to go to a licensed broker to make sure that the sale is consummated properly and within the scope of the law. Now, the City of Chicago also has licensed dispatchers. Now, the dispatchers is just going to be somebody who can serve as a centralized individual who can dispatch taxi cabs for service. This benefits, again, the customer and the industry. Now, switching to the next mode of public vehicle operators in the city of Chicago, we have livery owners. Livery owners are licensed in the city of Chicago to be able to have a business that will provide prearranged pickup and drop off rides in the city of Chicago. Key here is prearranged. Unlike taxis, they are not allowed to solicit any type of business from the street. Now, City of Chicago livery chauffeurs also have to meet certain requirements, and once they meet those requirements and once they're licensed, then, of course, they're able to drive the vehicles that will be providing the prearranged pickup and drop-off service. Now, one of the oldest uh, and unique operations for public vehicle in the City of Chicago is something called jitney operators. And, 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 and jitney operators were created years ago in small neighborhoods um, that will pick up passengers and usually they cater to a little small central business district and, they're, and, and, and they have to follow the same rules and regulations that are prescribed in the code but because they're not licensed taxis or liveries they are precluded from certain areas where they can conduct their business and as you can see they're the major airports in the city, Navy Pier and McCormick Place. Now, one of the things as a consumer you should know if you're in the city of Chicago is when you're looking for a taxi cab, you can tell if it's a legal operating taxi cab by just looking for a few basic things. In this photo, you'll see that the top number the identification number of the cab does not match the license plate. You'll also notice on the one vehicle that it's showing a, a City of Chicago phone number and it has a business name that's pretty similar to one of the major operators in the City of Chicago, but it's not the major operator in the City of Chicago. So a few simple rules in identifying legal operators in the city of Chicago, taxi plates are numbered 1 through 69.99. Livery plates are numbered from 7,000 to 99.99. What that tells you is anytime you see anything more than a four digit plate on a livery or on a taxi cab, they shouldn't be operating in the city of Chicago. Now, there is one exception. And that exception is going to be if your fare originated in a suburb and they pick you up from your suburb and take you to a location in the city, there's nothing preventing them from operating from the suburb that they're licensed in. However, they are not allowed to solicit any type of round trip fares. Now, of course, as a customer, if you live in a suburb and you turn around and say, look, can you pick me back up at this time? that's certainly allowable. But in the event that this individual would be pulled over by anybody that enforces these regulations, they certainly would have to be able to provide proof that this has all been prearranged. There's a little more detail here for those that want to dive down, to dive down into more specific information, but this is the general type of thing that you as a customer will probably be interested in knowing. 
Going back to originally when I said the taxi cab medallions will match the plates and the number on the car, as you can see, on the photo on the left, you can see that the vehicle number is 3291, the plate number is 3291, and the licensed medallion is 3291. And that is a legal taxi that's allowed to operate in the city of Chicago. Now, the vehicle on the other side of that photo is a vehicle that, like any other vehicle, is allowed to travel on any street in the city of Chicago. They just cannot be doing business in the city of Chicago. And as you can see, they have more than a four-numbered plate, and that should be the biggest tip to you. And, and what's important is that if you utilize transportation providers, licensed taxis or liveries, or anybody else that we talk about today that's licensed by the city of Chicago, and there is a problem, then we have an opportunity to enforce them if they've done something that may be out of the scope of operating requirements. But when you take a ride from somebody who's not authorized, it makes it very difficult to address any type of situation such as that. Again, these are examples of a city taxi cab versus a suburban taxi cab. Now, as you see these suburban taxi cabs, unless I state different, you know, again, there's nothing preventing them from driving in the streets of the city of Chicago on the public way, but they're not allowed to solicit fares, and certainly a fare needs to originate for them outside of the city of Chicago if they're bringing a fare into the city of Chicago. Again, if you look at these two pictures, one is a legitimate city licensed taxi cab, and another vehicle will appear to be a legitimate city licensed taxi cab, but in essence it is not. Now, there's nothing illegal about what they're doing as long as they don't solicit a fare from you. However, if you get in that vehicle and it's not a licensed City of Chicago taxi and you should leave some merchandise in there or you should have some type of problem with payment or have some type of problem with service that was received, we're never going to have a record of who you're even dealing with. So one of the most important things as you as a customer is that you should always be aware of the license plate and cab number of the vehicle that you're getting in. Now in the city of Chicago, they're all one of the same, but remember, suburban cabs do not have to follow by those rules. Same thing applies as what we talked about with taxi cabs with liveries. As you can see in this photo, there's a four-numbered plate, which is a legally licensed livery in the city of Chicago. Now, if you look on the other side, you're going to turn around and see that there's a vehicle there that has more than four numbers. And unfortunately, you know, this vehicle may have been impounded uh, for operating in the city of Chicago without properly being licensed or having a ride that originated from outside of the city of Chicago. Now, the City of Chicago issues licenses and vehicle identification items so that anybody that's allowed to enforce the rules and regulations of the Municipal Code, law enforcement, and our investigative staff, they have some ways of identifying a legitimate operator. So every taxi or livery is always going to have what's called a hard card. And this is going to be representing them as a licensed vehicle. Also, they're going to have a sticker that's on the vehicle, and that sticker is going to show what period that it's properly licensed for. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are several operating requirements that are going to be posted in the Municipal Code. And these are important for industry operators to make sure that they clearly understand what they can and cannot do. But they're also there for you as a customer in case you want to find out some information about something that may have happened that you're unsure about. And again, all this information is going to be available to you online. But as you can see, it's very detailed. And so for today's purpose, this is um, just going to be inf general information so that you know that it exists if you need to check out specific detail. 
Information regarding transportation network providers can be obtained through the Chicago Municipal Code, Chapter 9-115. A City of Chicago licensed transportation network provider, also referred to as a TNP, is a person who offers or provides transportation network service. Now transportation network service means prearranged transportation service offered or provided for compensation using an internet enabled application or digital platform. Now City of Chicago licensed transportation network driver is a driver who's an individual that's affiliated with a transportation network provider company. The following are some key definitions that are important to transportation network providers. Transportation network vehicles are provided to provide your transportation service. Again, these are done via an enabled internet application or digital platform. These are prearranged transportation services through a licensed internet enabled application or digital platform. A transportation network driver is an individual who's affiliated with this transportation network service. A transportation network provider means that this person is going to offer prearranged transportation. Transportation network service has to be prearranged via this internet enabled application or digital platform. Now these transportation network providers have the same rules, well not the same rules, but they have many rules and regulations that are going to dictate how they should operate. And as you can see, the City of Chicago will go to great lengths to detail the definitions for you and provide them online in the event that you have questions as a customer or in the event that you're considering to be a transportation network provider as a business owner or as a driver. So please feel free to access this material online if you're interested. Again, this is detail for you if you have any specific questions. Another area that the City of Chicago regulates is a new industry called pedicabs. They're non-motorized uh, public passenger devices to provide transportation. You'll usually see them in sporting arena areas and in the downtown and in certain business districts. Now, this industry is specifically directed where they can operate and where they cannot operate. And again, there's rules and requirements that they have to follow to ensure that you as a customer are provided a fair and good service and they as a business operator follow the rules that are required for them to carry out their service. And just like any other public vehicle operator, they're also required to be licensed. This is a typical photo of what a pedicab would look like. I'm sure you've seen them. Um, many times you'll see them in tourist areas. And again, the city of Chicago issues them license plates, licensed to the drivers of the vehicles and licensed to the business operators. And these are all the requirements for insurance and where they can operate and where they cannot operate and hours that they can operate. And these again will be available to you online in the event you're interested in uh, being a customer, a business operator, or a driver. Now as we go through the operating requirements we'll come to some of the last areas of public vehicle operators that the city licenses. So let's start with horse-drawn carriages. You'll see these a lot of times in the downtown business district. And just like everything else in the public vehicle industry, they're also licensed, their drivers are licensed, the business is licensed, they have operating requirements that's going to say when the horses can be out, what temperatures they can be in, and what streets they can operate on. And everybody has to follow the same rules and regulations that's prescribed in the municipal code or promulgated. And you as a customer, again, can access these online. 
The City of Chicago also licenses charter and sightseeing tour buses. Again, you'll see these primarily in the downtown area. And the business will be operated as well as the drivers that are providing the service. And again, there's basic requirements of where they can operate, how they can solicit a ride, and how much they can charge or post their rates for what they're charging. Now, the City of Chicago also licenses private ambulances. And as you can see at the bottom of this slide, um, the, li the ambulance is licensed, and this is for prearranged basic life support transportation. And again, the license and operating requirements are there to protect the industry and to protect you as a customer. Another thing that's used is what we call a medical carrier's license, a Medicar transporter. And basically what this means is it's going to be a public passenger vehicle which is specifically designed, constructed, and equipped uh, so that they can provide non-emergency transportation for persons for compensation uh, that are going to require some type of medical services or persons with disabilities for any purpose. Now one of the last areas that we regulate as a public vehicle operator is commercial passenger vessels. And these are boats that carry passengers for hire. They can be chartered cruises or they can be ferries or taxis uh, that operate on our waterways. Now, one of the other requirements for our department for public safety as well as consumer protection is we have a truck weight enforcement division. Now, our investigators are certified by the state to conduct this operation. And basically what they do is they'll pull over trucks that are operating on the public way that are operated in a restricted area and that they believe they are overweight. Now, there's requirements that are posted via signage and there's requirements that are in the City of Chicago Municipal Code as well as the state statutes. And basically these investigators will enforce these restricted areas of travel on the public ways. And many times you'll see these 5 ton and 10 ton load limits and these bridge weight restrictions. Those are posted there, one, to protect you as a passenger on the public way and then the physical public ways and the amount of commercial travel, uh, um, the amount of commercial traffic that can travel on and in residential areas. And that's part of the truck weight enforcement program for our department. Another quasi-public vehicle operator is what we refer to as valet companies. Now, valet companies are somebody that when you pull up to a business, you're going to give them the keys to your cars, and you're going to presume that they're going to park your car legally for a fee and retrieve your car when you come back from whatever activity you're conducting. And we, and we license these operators, and we also require them to follow certain operating requirements. Now, one of the biggest things as a consumer we want to say to you is anytime you have your car valeted, one thing you should always do is make sure you get your receipt as required by law and make sure you hold on to that receipt at least for 30, 60 days because if for some reason that they, the valet operator ended up not parking your vehicle legally and in the event your vehicle received a parking ticket, this would be an opportunity to prove your case that you should not be liable for that parking violation. So here's some specific things uh, that you should know about when you park your car with a valet operator. They should be using legal on and off street parking spaces. They should always place a placard in your window so that any law enforcement agency that goes to issue a ticket knows that that vehicle is a valet vehicle and that they should be dealing with the valet company. The receipt you receive, which is required, should also be time stamped and that will also help you substantiate any type of case that you may have in the event of 
a parking ticket that may have been issued to you. And valet operators have to operate within the scope of law. So that means they're not allowed to alter or, or change meter tickets so that to bypass paying any legal parking fees that they're required to pay. And these rules and regulations provide you as a customer uh, an opportunity to have your vehicle parked by someone safely and it provides some requirements and guidelines for an operator to make sure that they follow the guidelines as prescribed by the municipal code and any type of rules and regulations that may be provided by our department. So in closing, again, the focus of our department is to ensure a fair and vibrant marketplace for businesses and you as a consumer. Once again, if you have any type of complaints or concerns or questions, please feel free to contact us at the email on the screen here. And again, complaints are best served by calling our 311 system. Again, calling 311 is going to provide you an opportunity to be able to track and find out when your complaint has been addressed. And as a department, has a tracking meca mechanism in place for us to provide you the best service. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Thank you.